These days, hearing that an indie title has shut down a service for good is a pretty common occurrence, and the answer to why is usually pretty clear. I mean, Rocket Arena, Super People, Hyperscape, I could really go on. But there's one game, one game that's especially bugged me. From 2 million downloads during the beta, to shutting down the service just two years later, this game's demise came as a shock to a lot of people. And with names like Smitty, Sunday, and even Markiplier covering the game, I think it'd be impossible for it to fail. I am of course talking about EA's and Velen Studios' Knockout City. So what happened? Well, today I'm going to be delving into why I believe Knockout City failed, and how Velen could have prevented it. But first... This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX is a web browser, but cooler. Chrome, more like, uh, um. Uh. Opera offers a ton of customization with GX mods. This ranges from a simple background all the way down to how your keyboard sounds. Now, if you're like me, this sounds like a lot more work than you can be bothered to do. Well, once again, they've got you covered with GX Store. Here, you can easily change the entire look and sound of your browser. Simply look for a theme you like and click install. Wow. Yeah, I like the theme, but the keyboard sounds are a bit much. Why not swap them out? I mean, you can mix and match as much as you'd like. Head back to the mods tab and check which ones you want on and which ones you don't. I've got a mix of anime browser sounds, creamy keyboard sounds, and TF2's background music and theme. But don't worry, if you want, you can easily enable and disable mods to suit your style. And I know how annoying it can be to have to close all your tabs just to play games at a reasonable frame rate, but you don't need to worry about that either, thanks to GX Control. This panel lets you have control over how much CPU or RAM Opera is allowed to use. Finally, you can watch my videos on your second monitor while playing your favorite, decade-old, highly unoptimized first-person shooter slash hat simulator. Now this is all well and good, but I can't be bothered switching over all my bookmarks and extensions and browsing history. It's just too much work. Yep, you're really not listening, are you? I mean, do you think that they'd ignore the most inconvenient part of swapping browsers? Watch this. Ta-da! Check out my link down below to give Opera GX a try. Now, back to the video. But for a game to fall so far, it must first rise to the top. And goddamn did it get close. Released in 2021, Knockout City was, in simple terms, Dodgeball the video game. <laughs> oh, that was sick. Throw balls, catch balls, dodge balls. The concept being so universally understood that anyone could jump in and immediately know what they had to do. And it was super addictive. The crisp twinkle after a perfect catch or the thwack when you land a hit, followed by an enthusiastic cheer from the crowd. Listening to it today makes me feel so nostalgic. And for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while now should know how much I love the music. It really accompanied the gameplay perfectly. Ooh, see you later. The maps were bright and busy with all these moving objects to use to your advantage. The objectively best one was Rooftop Rumble, which was, as the name suggests, two rooftops of differing statuses. It's staged as the fancy side and the more rugged side, with the rugged side stealing power from the fancy side for their little concert. It was these small details that really made these spaces feel alive. Oh my god, Swayo. It's a, it's a one level difference. There was nine ball types, which would be randomly selected at the start of the match. My favourite by far being the cage ball, which would imprison any sucker unlucky enough to not catch it. But that's not it. While they were rolling around waiting for their sentence to end, you could pick them up and use them as a ball. <laughs> oh my god, that was so toxic. I mean, I have so many fond memories of caging someone just to immediately throw them into the nearest pit. Now, the crossplay beta dropped at the perfect time. Battle Royales were getting stale, and this was the breath of fresh air players like myself needed. I mean, I fell in love immediately. Uh, oh. <laughs> it only lasted two days, but they already had players begging for more. It was just that fun. And if you still don't believe me, well, for whatever sick sentiment, I still have the beta installed on my PC. I mean, I seriously can't understate just how great it was. But this video isn't called how to make the most fun and successful video game ever made of all time. What the hell happened? Well, it starts with an outdated business model. 21st of May, 2021. A month and a half after the beta, they officially released the full game with a $20 price tag. 
This surprised a lot of people. The game had seasons, a cosmetic store, and even a battle pass. It was the perfect opportunity for a free-to-play model. But weirdly, they opted for the pay-to-play option and, in turn, implemented a free battle pass they coined the Street Rank. Here you could earn 900 levels of goodies, covering all sorts of customization. That's player icons, gloves, hairstyles, glasses, outfits, taunts, hollow bucks, MVP animations. Everything that the game had to offer was right here for free. This would span over the entire game's lifespan and wouldn't reset with each season. I mean, sounds pretty good, but despite this, many people didn't seem all that interested in paying and were more concerned about how this might affect the game's player count. What's up guys, welcome to the Cream Podcast, hope you're doing great. Today we're joined by two very special guests, we've got Jimmy and hey, Timmy on. What's up? How you guys doing? I suppose the first question, how do you feel about the game being $20? I know there's been a lot of talk about, yeah. you know, maybe reducing the price. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Thanks so much for having me, man. It's great to be here. Uh, I guess my first gripe, I just, I kind of wish the game was pure free to play. Mm. You know, I feel like it's going to die when the trial period ends. Jimmy, that's a really good point. And I actually do want to ask, um, Timmy, welcome to the show. Hey, Thanks up? for coming on. Um, What's your thoughts on all this? I know you're kind of probably in a similar boat, but mm. yeah. Uh, you know, I really wish I could say something different. You know, Timmy was right on the money. Uh -huh. I just, I don't know how many people are going to buy it after the trial ends. I mean, I see so many people complaining about the non-free-to-play. But on the other hand, going free-to-play doesn't guarantee success either. As Josh Harrison, the director of marketing, put it, Free-to-play is not this guaranteed ticket to success. For every League of Legends or Fortnite that's a major success, there are plenty of free-to-play games that die when the next thing comes out. They also didn't want to limit what people could wear. They wanted everyone to have an equal chance to look great. And while this is a nice sentiment, charging any amount for a game will always restrict a large portion of players. Even with the game being free for EA Play and Xbox Game Pass subscribers, there's still a paywall that some people just won't be able to cross. Now to their credit, they did eventually make the game free to play, but this was too little too late. This left the game with far less players than the beta had initially projected. Not a great start, but hey, as long as that's the only hurdle to cross, then I'm sure they'll be able to recover. It's oh no. Day 1 release is usually pretty bumpy for any game, and Knockout City was no exception. But I mean, these servers were bad. I'm talking stop playing the free trial bad. Me? Well, I bought the deluxe version, so I stuck through it, hoping to find one good server in the sea of land. This server problem plagued the game on and off for around two weeks. This combined with it costing money meant that they had unfortunately already lost a large chunk of their player base. And as everyone who's ever played one of these in their later stages knows, that means longer queue times and getting thrown into hyping servers. And in a game where reaction time is arguably the most important factor, any delay is more than enough to push away even the most die-hard players. And this next bit might be a little petty, but like, did they even play their own game at high ping? I mean, it's one thing to get shot when you were behind a wall in games like Apex Legends or Valorant, but it's a whole nother story to see your character catch a high-speed dodgeball, and then one frame later, eat that same dodgeball to the face. And I know I'm whining, but you need to understand that when you get queued up with someone equal to your skill level on higher ping, 9 out of 10 times, they're gonna win. The reason why is actually a problem of its own. While the developers claim the opposite, one issue that stayed consistent was that the game was far too simple. There's a lot of ways we could have gone to just make the game far more complex than what we currently have. Uh, but every time we did, it always felt like we were taking one step away from that core, solid, fun center. Outside of the basic maneuvers like throwing and passing, your options were pretty limited. You could fake throw, tackle, lob or curve the ball, overcharge for faster travel time, and turn it into a ball for instant knockouts. But all of these features failed to add any meaningful text that players can use to outplay their opponents. One person I always think of when this kind of conversation is brought up is Apex Legends content creator Fade. The way he plays is so distinctive that I once recognized his gameplay on a co-worker's phone while we were both on break. Is that Fade? Yeah. You can improve at the basics, your tackle accuracy, your mix-ups, team play, etc. But the game lacks that extra complexity that allows for expression and depth. For context, the most complicated tech developed was self-passing, and even that was redundant outside of solos. Not to say that some people didn't get really good at the game, but it's unusually hard to distinguish between, say, a 50-hour player and a 150-hour player, unless you really take a closer look. 
But why is this important? Well, it's all about retention, keeping the players playing your game. I mean, there's a reason I still open Team Fortress 2, despite having over 6,000 hours. It's because even after playing for so long, there's still things I can spend time improving on. The same can't be said for Knockout City. This combined with the lack of content released after launch meant that it really didn't take long for players to get bored and move on. <sighs> Look, don't get the wrong idea. I love this game. It's just such a shame to see it go down like this. I mean, people were screaming about these problems even before the game came out, but the developers just didn't seem to listen. So now comes the question, how could they have prevented it? The first one is obvious and you're all probably thinking it too. You say it with me. Ready? Release the game. Free to play! Good work. While they might disagree, the fact that there were hundreds if not thousands of messages asking about and actively discussing free to play should at least raise some alarms. I understand that you're going to get that with any paid game, but a graph like this doesn't just happen on accident. By cutting out their primary audience, they've shot themselves in the foot. I can only imagine how it would have panned out if it was free from the beginning. But that's not the only problem. How do we fix player retention? Initially, I thought that adding more depth to the core gameplay was the solution, you know? Abilities, classes, whatever. But then it wouldn't be Knockout City anymore. Its simplicity is what made it so fun in the first place, so the only other solution that I see is to add more content more frequently. That's more maps, more balls, and more events. With the hypothetical increased player base from free to play, having these constant content drops would surely give players a reason to come back. And to address the elephant in the room, yes, that would also mean more opportunities for paid items in the store. But that doesn't mean you can't have a balance between free to earn items and paid items. I feel like their response to microtransactions is very all or nothing. Either there's a ton of them or barely any at all. You can find a fair balance that the community and developers can be happy with. But I'll admit, even with these fixes, there's still a pretty big chance that things wouldn't have turned out any different. In a time where playing it safe gets rewarded, studios releasing the same game year in, year out. It's difficult to imagine a game this unique making it as far as it did. Regardless, Velen Studios' Knockout City will continue to live on not just through me using their banging music in my videos, but in the publicly available private server build. For the last 30 seconds... Just give me an offline version so I can just play pass with this dummy forever. If at any point during this video you found yourself wishing you had been around while it was alive, hoping to maybe queue up with a group of friends and have some fun, well, all hope is not lost. If you're interested, I've put a video down below that will explain exactly how you can play Knockout City in 2024 and beyond. And hey, if it gets enough interest, maybe I'll queue up some games with you guys. Let me know by liking the video and leaving a comment down below. Are you kidding me? Special thank you to EXE Quirky and the rest of my patrons for supporting my work. You really help make these videos possible. Make sure to go check out your exclusive editing breakdown after this video. Shout out to you guys who watch all the way to the end. Make sure to watch every single video I've ever made. Catch you next time. Hey, that's nothing. That's there. that lot. Don't <laughs> use the one I just did. Hey, <laughs> hey, hi.